Sisters, we live in some interesting times. I got a group of people who think the Messiah just left the office. Come on now. And I got another group that think the Messiah just came into the office. But I need to let you know today that Obama is not the Messiah. Trump is not the Messiah. Before the foundations of the world, the Godhead had decided that we're going to redeem humanity. And so God the Father, in his sovereign election, decided to save a sinful people like us. So he said he's going to send his son, God the Son. And at the right time, Jesus came born of a virgin. He became God the Son, became the great and perfect God-man. Here comes Jesus, the promised Messiah. He grew up from a baby, but he was perfect in all of his attributes. He made his way to Golgotha's hill. John the Baptist saw him said, look, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin in the world. Here comes Jesus, making his way going on to Golgotha's hill. He takes his own cross and he makes his way. He stumbles a little bit, but he gets to the cross. And on that cross, on that cross, they made a mistake. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. They lifted Jesus up. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. And on the cross, there he died. He took separation from the Father so that we could be reconciled. He said, it is finished. He did work on the cross, and then he died. They took him down from the cross, put him in a bow tomb. They took him down from the cross, put him in a borrowed tomb. Why was it borrowed? Because he wasn't going to be there at all. And there he is. He lay defeated. That's what they said. They said he lay defeated on Friday. He lay defeated, they said, on Saturday, the Sabbath. But come early. Come early. Come early on Sunday morning. On the third day, Jesus, nobody had to call his name and say, get up, Jesus. Nobody had to come and try to remove the stone so Jesus could get out. Nobody had to reach in and touch him so he would rise from the dead. But early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up all by himself with all power and authority in his hands. They didn't roll the stone away so that Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away so witnesses could get in to see that he had already risen all by himself. Jesus rose with all power and he went about telling folks they need to repent and believe in him. Then he ascended and went back to the Father. Brothers and sisters, change will not come in Washington, D.C. Change will not come with the government. Change is upon his shoulder. Change will come when Jesus comes in the heart of men and women. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the one we trust in. That's where our hope is in. Will you give God praise? Let's not act like we're defeated. Let's not act like we don't know where our help come from. We're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. No idols of man, no powers of man, but only in the Lord Jesus. He is sovereign and he is in control. If you think for one moment God is in the heavens going, oh Lord, what, what, what's the world going to happen? If you think he's up there saying, oh, I didn't see this happening, I didn't realize this person won't get in the office. If you think that's him, you have a, you, you're not worshiping the true God. 
He does whatever he pleases. He puts in office who he pleases. He controls the hearts of men like he can control the river. That's our God. So while folks are running around with their heads cut off like the sky is falling, I want you to know Jesus is still sitting on the throne. Every four years or every eight years, depending on if they get reelected, there's a transfer of power. Guess what? There has been no transfer of power in the heavens because he's still sitting on the throne. He was sitting on it yesterday. He's going to be sitting on it tomorrow. He was sitting uh, 2,000 years ago. He'll be sitting 2,000 years from now. He still sits on the throne with all power and authority in his hands. So we come to gather today as a corporate body to give witness to the world. While they're complaining and while they don't know what's going on, we come as a group of believers, meaning we believe what we talk about. We come as a witness to the world that there's a counterculture in this place, that we are not worried, we're not, we're not, uh, uh, oh my, oh is me. No, we come to say we have confidence that our God is still in control. So we're going to worship him today. We're going to worship him today. We're going to praise him like we know all things are in his hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You better have your seats if you can. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. Amen. I miss y'all, Mount Zion. I feel like I ain't seen y'all since last year. Except on Wednesdays. Amen. But I praise God for each and every one of you. And for those that may not know, I'm Pastor Willie Harris, one of the elders here at Mount Zion. And we want to welcome you all here today. For we truly believe that God has great things in store, even in this service today. That God is so good and he's so magnificent. And so we're going to worship him today. That's what we've come here today to do is to worship him through the singing, through the worship. We'll worship him through the, through the giving and then we'll worship him through the proclamation of God's word. The hearing and receiving and act upon the, the preached word of God. And then we're going to worship him in baptism. Amen. We have two candidates here today that are publicly declaring their intention to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we praise God for them today. Amen. And so we want to be witnesses of this wonderful and worshipful time to see them get baptized. So welcome of our guests today to each and every one of you amen if you are first time guests if you are first time being with us here at mount zion we would ask if you'd be so kind to fill out the connection card if you received the bulletin there's a connection card in the bulletin if you'd be so kind to fill that out for us and then tear it out and drop it into the offering basket when the offering basket comes amen just so that we can record your presence with us today we promise not to spam you with unnecessary mailings but we do want to record that you're with us today amen for all of our members please don't as the new year has begun don't forget to stop by the tables and uh, help us to keep our records accurate so if you have had a change of address a change of phone number or a change of email address whatever it may be Please stop by the table, stop by your zone, fill that information out for us, amen, so that we can keep our information up to date and so we can get a hold of you as necessary, amen. Now, we do have a new president, and it grieves my heart to read some of the hateful things being said, not by the world, but by Christians. Now, whatever your personal opinions are of uh, the new president. Personally, it's my personal opinion. I don't think he's qualified. But that being said, if I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, how I talk about someone matters. If I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, it matters how I talk about someone and what I post even on social media. 
Do you realize that the Bible says you have to give an account for every word that you've said? <laughs> Woo, you better be thankful for Jesus. Because Luke 6 and 45 from the New Living Translation says a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So it's not so much revealing about what you think about a president and who they are, but it's really revealing about you and what's in your heart. My wife said, I'm going to quote her, we should not get too hung up on who sits in the Oval Office, but, me, but be more concerned with what is in the Oval Office of our hearts. We, we need to be concerned about what's going on. So even if you consider President Trump to be your enemy, and guess what? We're called to love even our enemies. And since Trump is our president, yes, he is. All this, he not my president. If you live in the United States, he is your president. You can move if you want to. He is your president. I'm sorry, just like President Obama was your president, and Reagan, and, and Bush, and Clinton, you know, and Washington. Well, I think nobody was alive when Washington was president, but... <laughs> So that means we are exhorted to pray for him. See, I think when I hear people say stuff like that, that, oh, that's not my president, they're trying, especially for Christians, they're trying to get away from the responsibility that God has called us to do. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God desires for us as believers regardless who is in office, that we would pray for our rulers, that they would rule in righteousness for the people so that we could live godly and peaceful lives, so that we could worship him in freedom. So I'm going to ask that you would stand with me as we're going to pray for President Trump. We're going to pray for him because this is what God has called us to do. See, and it's hard for you to hate somebody and pray for them at the same time. So if you have issues in your heart, start praying for them. And don't, I'm not talking about those prayers for Lord, get him out the office. Lord, you know, do something to him. Mm -mm. Genuinely pray for this man. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we really have no right to even entreat you or come to you. We're sinful people. Right now, call it on a holy God. God, it's only because of what Jesus has done on the cross that we have the right and the privilege to come before you and pray to the throne of grace. So God, when we, as we come to you right now, we want to confess and we want to ask for forgiveness, Lord, if there's been issues in our heart. That we've looked at a man who was made in your image and we've had hateful thoughts against him or his wife or his children. If we've posted anything, we've said anything that, that, that we're not talking about just regular criticism and, and things about what he could do right. But we've said some hateful things, some malice things, some belittling things, God. Lord, please forgive us, Lord. Because we would not want anyone to do that to us or our wives or our husbands or our children. Forgive us, Lord. 
Soften our hearts. Change it. Help us to not deify people to a high position that they ought not occupy. And at the same time, help us not demonize somebody to the point we have no sympathy for them. So God, do a work in us first. Change our hearts and our mindsets. And Father, we pray for President Trump. We pray, first of all, I pray for his true salvation. I pray not for mere profession, but I pray that you would change his heart. That you would do a work in him. That you would send somebody, I'm not even talking about some, and I know that are heretics, so these false preachers that he surrounded himself with, but please, Lord, send somebody that knows the word of God, that he would hear the true gospel, that he would be saved. Change him, Lord. I pray for his soul. I pray for the soul of his wife, the soul of his children. Lord, I pray for his safety. Don't let any hurt, harm come to him, Lord. Please protect him. Protect his family. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would help him to have wisdom and to rule, to represent all people. Not special interests, not those who are rich, not those who are in authority, but give him empathy and sympathy for those that are defranchised, Lord, those who are hurting God. Let him rule wisely, Lord. Lord, your word says that righteousness exalts a nation. So, God, I pray that you help him rule with wisdom, that this land could at least have some morals and rule in a way that all people can benefit. Lord, we just pray that you would bless not only him, vice president, bless those in Congress and in the Senate, bless all of his advisors. Lord, we pray even for former President Obama and his family that you would watch over them continue to do a mighty work that you would in our leaders God and send believers into even the political realm leaders who would stand for righteousness leaders who would go into Washington D.C. with all the odds against them in the darkness and would be light. Please, Lord. And then bless the church, the church of Jesus Christ, that we would truly be about your business to make disciples, that you would help us to get out of our comfort zone and get out of pretending and playing church, help the church stop entertaining and start preaching and teaching and equipping. If revival is going to start in this nation, it's not going to start in the capital. It's going to start in the churches. Whether large or small, it's going to start in the hearts and minds of men and women who have been redeemed and who say, we're going to follow you no matter what who are willing to even die for the word of God. Help us, this church, Mount Zion, to be such a church. And God, we pray all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, amen.